today on Another World. I was hoping you would consider me uh, a friend and somebody you could feel comfortable around. I do. I was also hoping you would consider me someone to be sociable with. As a matter of fact, speaking of being sociable, I was thinking about something tonight uh, at the supper club, or rather the connection. I didn't think it would take this much work to get you to ask. And that's bad news. I mean, I don't know how much longer I can go without working. I presume that means that uh, money is getting low. Low is an understatement. I would say running out is more like it. <laughs> OK. And now, the continuing story of Another World. I was talking to Pat. She told me how she was forced out of the complex, out of a job at the complex while Mac and Jamie were away. Thanks, honey. By Cecile. And that Philip resigned in protest. Yeah, well, that's ancient history, isn't it? It's a measure of Cecile's character, or lack of it. Well, it all worked out all right. I mean, Pat and Philip are both back working for Mac now, and there's been no harm done. What worries me is what's coming next. Something much more ominous. You sound like the six o'clock news. She's broke, Mom. How do you know that? I can't tell you. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, what's it got to do with us? I think it has a lot to do with her sudden reinterest in Jamie. Oh, now, Rachel, would you please cool it? I mean, in the first place, the Pat Phillip thing is, is old news to us. I mean, Max smoothed it over and forgot about it. I think he did that to please Jamie. Well, maybe and maybe not. Now, you just be careful, OK? I can handle Cecile. Look, honey, we're talking about our family. Now, both Mac and I are very worried that you're going to get too involved in this situation. Involved? You bet I'm involved. You want me to just stand around and watch my son get tangled up with a woman who's going to ruin his life? But, Cecile, I wanted you to get some well-earned rest. You and Jamie both. And... No, but that's the whole point. He's not supposed to be working away. You two are just impossible. Surprise? What kind of surprise? <laughs> well, yes, I guess that's fair enough. If I can have my little secret about chapter seven, you can have one little secret, too. OK, take care, and I'll see you soon. Oh, and listen, tell Jamie I want him to stop working. I mean, all work right away, and that's a direct order. I want him rested when he gets back here. I got a little surprise for him, too. <laughs> what are you doing? You're looking for buried treasure, are you? No, buried paper clips. They migrate. I mean, I put them in one place and then they're gone. Oh, I do. Oh. Oh, Delightful. boy, look at that. The nurses are now growing their own penicillin, huh? I'll speak to them. Yeah, was that Jerry Grove I saw a while ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to break a date with him. Blaine's party had to work the night shift. Oh, you couldn't get out of it? Well, no, I don't think you'd want me to. We have a lot of people out on vacation, and a lot of people are sick, if you believe that. Mm -hmm. I think you want a nurse around here, just in case. Yeah, well, that's very responsible of you. I do appreciate it, but I worry a little about Jerry. How's he getting along? He's OK, I suppose. Sounds awfully tentative. How is he taking his mother's death? It's can be expected. I mean, it must be very hard to lose a parent. And maybe even harder in this case, Margaret was his only family. You know, sometimes it can be just as hard to uh, have one. Listen, kid, on your next break, can we sit down someplace and have a little talk? Sure. Uh, is it about anything specific? Well, yeah. yeah. I want to talk to you about Rick and about your father. Mr. Blake, you're becoming a hospital groupie. 
Are you here for your appointment with Dr. Delaney? Yeah, I am. Well, she asked me to tell you that she's running a little bit late, and would you please wait for her out here? I will do anything for medical science. So, how are you? Um, you know, I get the feeling that's a standard line around here. I'm doing all right. Fine, thank you. Getting everything together again? It seems that way, and you? Total chaos. What happened? My daughter just blew in from Chicago. Windy City. <laughs> so what's a little girl doing in Chicago by herself? Oh, flattery, Mr. Blake, will probably get you everywhere. Sally is not, however, a little girl. Though I often fall into the trap of thinking of her as such. She is 18 and very much the young lady. 18? What, were you a child bride? <laughs> Do you practice lines like that, or are you simply by nature a kind and saint-like man? It's just part of my fascination. No one ever knows. I'm fascinated. Anyway, my adopted daughter, Sally, studied nursing in Chicago. But it looks like she's going to transfer to Bay State and study journalism. You're not putting on undue motherly pressure, are you? <laughs> no, not at all. But I have to admit, I am delighted. I'm beginning to feel more at home now that my daughter's around. I can understand that. Family, it's nice to have around. Do you get to see your... My son? Well, whenever I can. At that age, he spends a lot of time sleeping, so uh, I spend a lot of time here or at the sporting life doing whatever it is that I'm doing. Hmm. No time for social life. Not much. I really don't know that many people here. I don't remember that many people. I'm not comfortable with that many people. Present company excluded, of course. Thank you. I was hoping you would consider me uh, a friend and somebody you could feel comfortable around. I do. I was also hoping you would consider me someone to be sociable with. Well, as a matter of fact, speaking of being sociable, I was thinking about something tonight uh, at the supper club, or rather the connection. Isn't that the place you used to own? Right. Well, my partner's still there, and um, he was going to debut a new singer tonight. He said I should drop by here, that she sounded good. Sounds very interesting. Is that the kind of social activity you were talking about? I guess. Well, if uh, don't object to joining me, that is only if you're available. I didn't think it would take this much work to get you to ask. How's this right over here, huh? Oh, it's just fine. Uh, you know, you've really got me kind of curious here. What's this all about? You mentioned my father, Rick. Yeah. Well, look, I, I had a talk with Rick the other day, you know. From what he told me, which admittedly wasn't very much, um, I get the feeling well, he didn't have the most marvelous relationship with your dad. Am I getting that right? Yeah. There was another brother, Taylor oh. Halloway Jr. He died in his senior year in college in a car accident in a new car, a pre-graduation gift from dad. It was very hard on dad, very hard. He'd always seen TJ as his uh, replica someone who was going to um, carry on in the business, take over someday, carry on the family name, and make him immortal somehow. Yeah. So then this, this burden, it all fell on Rick. Yeah, but he only cared about going to med school and becoming a doctor. All of a sudden, there was this heavy number laid on him, a you are my son, you must succeed syndrome that dad transferred to him. I mean, that was okay for TJ. He was an extrovert and an overachiever all the way, but... But what? Go on. I don't like talking about Dad this way. I mean, he was a wonderful father to me. Oh, kid, of course, I'm, I'm sure he was. It's just that I'm, I'm trying to figure out what happened, why Rick is so, um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, after TJ died, Dad tried to make him over. Um, it didn't work. And after he got over the initial hurt that Rick was not interested in the family business, he concentrated on a perfection. 
If Rick wanted to stubbornly insist on being a mere doctor, he was going to be the best-known doctor that ever lived. Oh, I see. So that's where, then, then Rick gets the feeling that uh, nothing he ever does is quite good enough. Well, it never was. For Dad. I mean, what, no picture on the cover of a magazine? No Nobel Prize yet? I mean, not really. But you can see what it was. I mean, Dad wanted... He wanted TJ in a white coat. He never took the time to see all the good things Rick has all by himself. Yeah. So it begins to make a lot of sense. Now, that's why Rick is always pushing himself. Why he only sees all the wrong things he does, never sees the right things. Yeah. I guess so. I guess he's scared of failing or falling down because there'd never be anybody there to pick him up. Well, Rachel, you haven't got any choice. I mean, Jamie has to learn by making his own mistakes. Anyway, some people just don't listen. You ought to know that by now. You speaking from personal experience? Well, I can remember a couple of times when my motherly advice went right out the window. Only a couple? My daughter, the brick wall. <laughs> How's Amanda? She's fine. And Matthew, I'm sorry I always come when they're asleep. Uh -huh. I think he's the best baby in the whole world. <laughs> sure he is. No, I really mean it. You know, I can't really remember the other two being quite this easy. Has his father been by to see him? Yes, Mitch has been over several times. How are you handling that? There's nothing to handle. He comes over and he visits with the baby and then he leaves. And that's it? Of course that's it. What else? Well, that's a good question. What does that mean? Well, how are you going to handle Mitch Blake when he begins to remember his past? and that he was very much in love with you. You're hard to find. No, oh, didn't Nurse Frame tell you I was in here? Well, I didn't want to disturb you. I am compiling accident-related injuries and admissions since the first of the year. You can interrupt any time. Sure. <laughs> yeah, come on in. I'd love a break. Now, what's on your mind? Well, I've been thinking about some of the things we were talking about last week. And? Well, if you remember, I was talking about falling in love either for the first time or again with Rachel Corey. Well, I remember. I've made some decisions. That sounds ominous. No, no, not really. What are they? Well, actually, observations is a better word. I've been out to the Corey home, and I see what the two of them have, and it's rather impressive. And in spite of whatever my feelings are, whether they're real or imagined, whether it's love or just ego. I've decided that I'm better off without certain complications in my life. What are you, what are you saying, Mitch? What I'm saying is that whatever I felt or whatever I'm feeling now for the woman, even though she's the mother of my child, her life is her own. And I shouldn't be involved with her life. I've got to get on with my own life. I think we all do. Well, I think that's the way it has to be. I'm starting over. Clean slate and just going from there. Sounds very, very sensible to me. And, and difficult. But all the tough things in life are difficult. It's the way it has to be, right? How does Rachel Corey fit into this? Oh, well, that's exactly it. She doesn't. And that's what I have come to accept. Timing. Isn't that a new sexy film in town? <laughs> Wanna go? I meant I just used up my break. I didn't even know you were here. Weren't you supposed to be working on tonight's swing shift? What a misnomer. There's nothing swinging about it. <laughs> anyway, somebody got sick, flu or something. So, uh, that's the trouble with hospitals, full of sick people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I got switched. Well, you certainly got switched on. What's with you? It's the side of you in that freshly starched nurse's uniform. Uh-huh. Well, 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 don't get too close. I crease. Oh, hey, I almost forgot Dr. Matthews was looking for you. Well, I told him you weren't here, but since you are, maybe you should try and find him and see what he wants. Well, what is that supposed to mean? I hope he's not going to shoot me down with another schedule change. It took a lot of work, and 
animal cunning <laughs> to get Monday night free. Monday night? What's huh. the big event? Oh, yeah, I didn't tell you. And that's what I came all the way down here to do. But, well, anyway, uh, we're invited to uh, Blaine Ewing. Uh, we? You are free. No. Oh. Not free, but uh, inexpensive. Ah. Does that mean we can go? Yeah, that oh. means we can go. Well, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> what kind of affair is it? I don't know. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to start looking for a tie. <gasps> oh. mm. Is uh, Mitch Blake gone? <laughs> yes, he is, unless you see him hiding under the table. Oh, so that's what you do in here. <laughs> that's a doctor's prerogative. No, I should have gone to med school. Anyway, I need another doctor's prerogative. I need your signature on these new schedule changes for personnel. Okay. Oh, these are the ones I'm sure won't please everybody, but... It's part of the profession. Yeah. And is it just part of the professional interest when you keep asking about a certain patient named, uh, Mitch Blake? Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> Aside from the fact that he's so attractive and so quiet and... So sensitive. You have noticed. Oh, I do have eyes. <sighs> well, I may not have seen him first, but I want you to know that we are going out to dinner tonight. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's what he meant. What? Oh, nothing. You probably won't find out for yourself. Good or bad? Oh, I suspect it's good. And speaking of dating, I want you to know I am no longer the wallflower of the year. I have a date myself Monday night. <laughs> the social season's really picking up. May I ask with whom? You certainly may, with my lawyer, Brian Bancroft. A lawyer? Uh, does that mean that... Uh... Yeah. I am finally admitting my marriage to Robert's dead, and I'm going to give it the proper legal burial it deserves. Brian's been very kind. Hmm. So it would appear. I don't feel getting ideas. I'm hardly beginning a romantic whirlwind. Oh, just a little spin. Well, no, I'm... I guess I'm just trying to get my feet wet. So, uh... Easy, easy. Oh. oh. How's it look, Doc? Well, there we go. It looks very much like an arm on the mend. Yeah, that's just what I like, a precise medical evaluation. Are you still having headaches? Uh, some. Not as often as before. Any blackouts? No, hardly at all. Good. You, uh, you sleeping any better? Like a log. Well, maybe not exactly like a log, but, uh, I haven't had a nightmare in almost a week. Well, that sounds like good, healthy progress. I'm pleased to hear it. I'm delighted to say it. Say, listen, Doc, uh, when do you think I can, well, move out of the quarries? You sound awfully eager. Aren't they treating you well over there? Well, maybe too well. Now, I think I've been there long enough. I mean, they've got their own lives and... Well, Joey Perini and I have taken an apartment together. I kind of like to get going and move in, you know, put my life in order. Well, ordinarily, uh, I mean, I would say that you've, uh, you should be on your own in a week or two. Really? Yeah, provided you don't get into any arm wrestling. Hey, I got you, I got you. Now, listen, uh, what about work? Well, I'd say there's no problem there either, Great. if you had a desk job. If I had a desk job? So I won't be able to work at the docks, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, loud and clear. Man, that's bad news. I mean, I don't know how much longer I can go without working. I presume that means that uh, money is getting low. Low is an understatement. I would say running out is more like it. Are you still here? Yes, I'm still here. Why do you bother to keep an apartment at all? You never, never use it. Well, you should talk. You sleep here if it weren't for the fact that all the beds are taken. How's it going? Mm, slowly. You know, I'm not a master at these administrative details, but I'm learning. Well, you know, you should get somebody to help you with that. Don't spend all your free time on it. From one doctor to another, mind your own business. All right, all right. <laughs> What's happening down in the ECU? Well, it's busy, but manageable. We're, uh... Where do you suppose all these emergencies went before we had such a large facility here? I suppose they waited in line. I'm surprised the hospital didn't come up with the idea a whole lot sooner. Or at least one of the more brilliant doctors might have. We doctors are an unoriginal lot. Besides, we're far too busy to run around dreaming up schemes, you know. Oh, look, that's a cop out of ever heard of it. By the way, about this, um, this... Rest... 
Ah, yeah, I'm sorry. I was going to ask you about these um, things. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a million miles away. There. You were light years away. Can I draw you down just for a moment? Yeah, go ahead. Unless, unless it's something you want to talk about. Yeah, I had a talk with Kit Holloway today. Yeah? And she told me some very interesting things about Rick and their father. You mean you're trying to um, find out about his childhood, which will help you understand his problem more? Well, apparently Rick's problem was, uh, well, very much like that of the manic depressive, except that in his case, his extreme ups and downs were caused by the, uh, the drugs that he was introducing into his system, barbiturates and amphetamines, that kind of thing. You know, anybody on that kind of a self-destructive track, it's not just the pursuit of sheer pleasure that they're after. You know, there's, some, there's something else uh, that they're not getting in their lives. So you mean they turn to drugs? Yeah, well, I think that's what happened in Rick's case. The drugs became a prop to help him cope with the pressures. You don't think that by taking the internship, Rick's placing himself back in that kind of situation again, do you? There is always that possibility, I suppose. But Rick is a, a very talented physician. No, I think he would have a problem if the past began to dominate and began to create more, more pressure on him. Yeah, but what does all this mean? I mean, what, what can you do about it? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. It's just that yeah, I, I have the feeling that we all need someone in our lives, you know, someone that, uh, well, that we can depend on, someone maybe even in a position to evaluate us, you know, to, uh, well, to support us, to care about us. You mean someone like a mentor? Yeah, I suppose so, or a friend. I couldn't agree more, but um, you don't think Rick has someone like that in his life? No, I don't think he has had in the past. I think I'm going to see to it that he does now. Uh, Marianne, um, do you have a minute? Uh, is it work? No. Well, if it's about me and Rick... No, it's I'd... not. Well, not directly. It's uh, more about you and me. In what way? Well, I've been thinking that I've been stepping on a few toes lately. Yours and Rick's. And I've also been thinking that I've been getting a little bit too, um, involved. You and Rick are both consenting adults, and I don't want to play guardian angel to anybody. Besides, I realized what I was doing to our friendship while I was trying to preserve my brother's virtue. <laughs> well, Kit, I want you to know that Rick and I have had a long talk. I was very straight. I made no promises, so we both have a clear idea of what we're getting into. I don't enjoy playing games with people's feelings, Kit. I like Rick a lot, but that's all I can offer right now. We're just taking things a day at a time. Oh, I'm glad, and I don't know why I was getting so hysterical. <laughs> well, you care about Rick. It's understandable, but I couldn't make any promises to Rick, and I can't make any to you. I can't reassure you that I won't hurt Rick, just as you can't reassure me that I won't be hurt. Hello. Hi there. I'm uh, sorry I'm late, Mr. Corey. Uh, oh, it's all right. Dr. Matthews wanted to do a thorough examination. It kept me a little longer than I expected. No excuses is necessary. Actually, I, I rather enjoyed having a few quiet minutes alone without Liz buzzing me uh, answer the phone every two minutes. <laughs> Must be frustrating. No, comes with a job. I can accept that. But I do think we all ought to have a few minutes during the day away from the hectic activities to uh, reflect. Yeah. Maybe daydream a little. Oh, here you go. Oh, well, let me open that for you. <laughs> Thank you. They have very good salads here. I happen to like salads. Oh, no, tell me, uh, what what Dr. Matthews say? Well, he, uh, seems to think I'm coming along pretty well. Uh, as a matter of fact, says I can even, uh, strike out on my own again soon. That's terrific. Yeah. By striking out on your own, I guess you mean you'll be moving out of the house then? Well, uh, Joey Perini, uh, has the apartment pretty well in order, or so he says. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, I sure will miss having you around. Midnight snacks and all. <laughs> yeah, no more strange noises of things going bump in the night. Huh? That's right. <laughs> 
So, uh, how about work? Will you be able to go back to it? Well, Dr. Matthews was pretty firm about me not doing any heavy labor for a while. Uh-huh. Does that bother you? Well, you know, the job at the dock was the only one I was able to get, and if I can't work there, I guess... I know how you feel, but, uh... I expect Russ had some very strong reasons to advise you not to go back to working at the dock site. Do you think that was just because he doesn't want you to exhaust yourself physically? It must be. Well, who knows? His decision might be a fortunate one. <laughs> For whom? For you. As a matter of fact, a job is why I wanted to have this meeting to talk with you. A job? Yeah. I'm inclined to agree with Russ. I don't think it's a good idea for you to go back and uh, work at the dock site again, either. Uh-huh. But I, once I'm feeling better, I mean, I, I think I can handle it okay. No, but that's not my point. I don't want you to go back and work at the dock site because I want to offer you an entirely different kind of job instead. One right in the Corey Publishing Complex. <laughs> Oh, sure. sure. Everybody keeps telling me how terribly busy it is down here, like a fool. I believe them. Believe it or not, there was a whole line of people out here an hour ago. Uh -huh. what, what is that you've got there? New schedules. I took a lot of work and animal cunning to get my schedule off on Monday night. I'm just seeing, seeing if my bribe paid off. And did it? I hope so. Yes, yes, I have the graveyard shift. <laughs> Crafty. Mm. Well, planning is the key to success. Now I should have enough time to take Marianne to Blaine's party and be on duty in time. Well, you seem to have everything under control, then. Not really, but I'm, I'm open to changes, as long as they're on my terms. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, if you don't mind my prying, uh, since Marianne is my niece, uh, my intentions are honorable. Are they? Mm. Oh, I'm surprised to hear that. Whatever happened to the, the younger generation? Or, or is it just that you don't want to talk about it? I want to talk about it. <laughs> Being a, a poem or so. Something memorable. All right, well, let's just say it's all right for now. Well, for now is just fine. And that's all that any of us really has anyway. Mm. I remember now what it was I wanted to ask you. Um, to check that schedule again, will you please? <clears throat> it would help if you told me what I'm checking for. I don't. I don't even think your schedule is in here. No, but see if um, see if you're off tonight. Me? Why? Well, I thought that if uh, unless you're going to be serenading Marianne with some memorable song, uh, maybe you'd like to come over to my house for dinner. My dad's going to come over. And... Sounds terrific. Let me see. Thank you. Oh, well, you're in luck, Dr. Matthews. I'm not on duty tonight. Well, good. Um, how about 7 o'clock? Great. I look forward to it. All right. Sweetheart. Did you have a good day, darling? Mm, not bad. And you? Oh, Mom came over for a while. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And those beautiful cat children? Oh, mm -hmm. don't don't wake them up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I took Amanda over to look at uh, preschools for the fall. Oh, yeah? That's all she can talk about. I'll bet. She's in watching television now. She'll be in in a minute. Can I get you something? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Did we hear from our number one son? Uh, not today, but I did get a call from Cecile this morning. Oh, so Cecile is reporting to you? Why not Jamie? I don't know. He's probably busy or something. What did she say? Not much. She said they're fine. Mm -hmm. And she needed some uh, answers uh, about editing my manuscript before she could go any further. I just bet she did. <laughs> Rachel. Why is she so busy editing your manuscript? I thought they were on vacation. I mean, don't they have other better things to do? I should think they would, but unfortunately, they both seem to have gotten it into their heads that we, back here at the office, cannot survive without constant input from them. So I'm getting a constant flow of work from Jamie via Express Mail. Well, I don't understand those two. 
I mean, if she cares about Jamie as much as she says she cares about him, why doesn't she let him get some rest? Darling, you told him that all the time. He never listened to you. Why should Cecile have any more effect? Like mother, like son. He's got a will of his own. Well, I'll be glad when they're home, and then I can keep my eye out on him. All right, as long as it's only an eye and nary a finger. What does that mean? <laughs> that means your little boy is growing into a big, big man. Of course, you can keep an eye on his great progress through life. But you really don't have any more right than any of the rest of us to tamper in his affairs, Rachel. Okay, let's drop it, all right? I've had it to hear with uh, you and Mom telling me how I should treat my own son. I mean, I'm not supposed to get involved with his work. I'm not supposed to get involved with him all and right, Cecile. All right, I'm not it's supposed... only because we care about you. We care about you like you care about Jamie. So you say because uh, I resent what you're telling me that he's going to resent what I tell him? Well, yes, it's possible. I feel that if Jamie felt he needed help, he would come to you immediately. So let's just let him run his own life the way he wants to run it, and we're going to run our life the way we want to run it. Meaning? Meaning that I'm not going to get obsessive about my work the way Cecile and Jamie evidently have gotten about theirs. I mean, I have a lovely wife in whose company I adore to be, and I haven't been with her too much lately, so I've made some plans to take her out to dinner tonight. Oh, well, that'll be nice. Where are we going? Well, the management's changed on the supper club, you know. It's now called a connection, so I made a reservation for two. Oh, that'll be fun. It'll be interesting to see if it's changed. Yeah, and also I heard they had a new singer, and this is her first night, her opening night, so that might be fun. Well, that means I've got to get a sitter for the children. Oh, that mm -hmm. reminds me. Mm -hmm. Sandy said that he's moving on soon. Oh, really? Does Russ think that's okay? Yes, he does. Russ also doesn't think he should go back to his job at the docks. Oh, Mac, I think that's going to be a blow to Sandy. I mean, I think he was counting on that job. No, no need for him to worry. He's already found another one. Already? Yes, I offered him a job at the complex. Oh, that was nice of you, but does he have any experience? Yes, as much as Jamie had when he came to us. He's a very bright boy. I'm playing a hunch. He's going to be as good for us and as good for Corey Publishing as Jamie was when he came to us. the bird. Oh, it seems to be taking an awfully long time. Look at that. Oh, why don't you turn up the temperature? Well, the temperature is up. It's on 500. What's 500? Well, what's taking it so long? Do you, do you remember to thaw it? It, it? it thaws in there while it's cooking, doesn't it? I, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. It's not going to get done. Look, look we, time. Could, we could eat the edges and just leave the center. Uh. Tuna fish. How about a couple of nice old-fashioned tuna fish sandwiches? What do you think of that? Well, you know, tuna fish happens to be one of my all-time favorites. You're a wonderful guest, though, even though you're not very good at lying. But tuna fish it is. Let's see, I think we've got two bears tuna fish. Mm. This whole family thing, it's a lot more complicated than I thought. You know, Tracy says that we are... Uh, Tracy always said. Um, you all right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to put her in the past tense. To realize that she's gone, she's not ever coming back. It must be difficult. I mean, when someone goes so suddenly. I, I, I mean, you know, if someone's sick for a long time, you, you figure that you can psych yourself into a future where you know they're not going to be around. I think so. It doesn't seem to work out that way, though. People never do stop hoping. Yeah. No, I guess... I guess not. Was it difficult for you? When? Um, I had a talk with Kit this afternoon. She mentioned... Uh, T.J.? Hmm. I swear that that sister of mine has a, an identity problem. She thinks she's a walking information booth on the life of Rick Holloway. Who needs a press agent with Kit around? Oh, don't, don't get mad at Kit. I, mean, I did ask. And if you don't want to talk about it, I'll never mention it. No, you can talk about TJ all you want. I doubt I'll be any assistance, simply because there isn't much I remember about him. I was young, and he was my idol. So you see, I don't really know or understand much about him as a person. 
Sounds cold-blooded, but his death really didn't have that much impact on me. Not until later, until I got to be the age TJ had been when, when he died. And then my relationship with the almighty Taylor Holloway took on a whole new perspective. I had no idea what it was about then, and I think I do now. We've talked about all this before. Well, that's all right. Don't let that bother you. I'll listen to it all again. I'm no good at repeat performances. Besides, I could talk and talk and talk about it, but it still doesn't erase the fact that what happened, happened. I just got to forget it. So, come on. Now, we're going to make these, tuna, these gourmet tuna fish sandwiches before your dad gets here. We better get started. So, uh... Why don't you open the tuna, and I'll butter the bread. Or whatever. Bread. Uh-huh. You do have bread? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, of course I've got bread. Don't panic. There's plenty of bread. Where is the bread? Uh, the bread is, um, in the freezer. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to The Connection. Thank you. Uh, we have a reservation for two. Corey? Yeah. Yes. Oh, come right this way, please. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful time. Thank you. I'm sure we will. Ladies and gentlemen, Hi, I'm Melissa Needham, and I would like to welcome you to the newest and hottest spot in Bay City. I'd also like to tell you that uh, you are about to witness a momentous, I hope, event, because this is the first time that I'm going to be singing on the stage. Ah! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And before we begin, I would like to introduce my pianist, Mr. Joe Walsh. Baby cried the day the circus came to town. She didn't want parades just passing by her. So she painted on her face and took off with some clown and danced without a net up on the wire I know a lot about her cause you see that baby is an awful lot like me don't cry out loud keep it inside learn how to hide your What's wrong? Nothing. It is what you wanted, isn't it? Well, I appreciate that, but I think what I need to do at this point is to find family or, or friends if I have them. No calls. 
unless you're expecting someone. Oh, yeah. What is it about him that makes him smile? Oh, he's a very happy baby. Well, you must be doing a good job raising him. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, all right. Let's go. Had enough of this. <laughs> okay. There you go, Pumpkin. Give your hand to me and you say hello. I could hardly speak. My heart is beating so anyone can tell. You think you know me well. Think you know the one who dreams of you at night, longs to kiss your lips and hold you tight. To you, I'm just a friend. That's all I've ever been. You don't know me. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.